Okay, now for question number two from the paper for the P4 Pure Mathematics International A-Level Sample Assessment Paper. Here we have a question um, about differentiation. And this question here involves what is called implicit differentiation. And we'll go through what that means now. So we got to find dy dx in terms of x and y. Now, when you got to find dy dx, what we used to do in the earlier grades, like, like for example, when we were in P2 and P1, we would basically try to make y the subject of the formula, and then you'd have y equal some function of x, and then you would differentiate both sides uh, with respect to x. You basically differentiate with respect to x, and you'd end up with dy dx equals the differential of whatever that's inside that function. Okay, now, um, in this case, to make y the subject of the formula will be a bit awkward and it won't leave us something which is easy to differentiate. So what we're going to do is we're going to use implicit differentiation. And implicit differentiation is where you differentiate each term separately with respect to x, which is actually what we do normally when we're differentiating. Um, you know, something like when we have y equals 3x cubed plus 2x squared plus 7x plus 4, for example. What we do when we differentiate this, we differentiate every term separately with respect to x. So even this, we'd say, all right, the differential of y with respect to x is dy dx. And we actually do something else, which I'll explain in a minute. And this is differential of 3x cubed with respect to x, which gives us 9x squared. And the differential of 2x squared with respect to x, which gives us 4x and the differential of 7x with respect to x with 7, and the differential of 4 with respect to x, which is 0. So that's how you go about it. So that's basically what we're going to do now when you have this type of situation. We don't normally think about it in this format when we're differentiating in P1 and P2, but that's actually what we're doing. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to differentiate x cubed with respect to x, which gives me 3x squared. Okay, then I'm going to differentiate 2xy with respect to x. Now, y is some sort of function of x. So we have like a product of two separate functions. Okay, so what we can do here is we can use what's called the product rule. So let's call one of them, let's call uh, 2x u, and we can call um, the y v. So we're going to have the differential of u with respect to x is 2, and the differentiate differential of v of of y with respect to x the differential of 2x with respect to x is 2 and the differential of y with respect to x is dy dx you differentiate y with respect to x you get dy dx okay so you're going to have 3x squared now with the with the product rule you're going to have basically these two multiplied plus those two multiplied okay it doesn't matter which way you do it with the product rule but i always like to go this way and then that way so you've got 2x got plus 2x times dy dx uh, plus 2 times y. So that's that. all of that is a differential of 2xy. Then you've got minus x. So differential of minus x is minus 1. Then you've got minus y cubed. Now, I want to differentiate y cubed. So you're going to have minus. Now, the differential of y cubed with respect to x. Okay, what you do here is you use basically what's called the chain rule. Okay, so you're basically differentiating uh, the main function with respect to x. So you're going to get with so so you're going to have three y squared, and then what you do is you multiply by the differential of what's inside the function. It's like when you do, uh, for example, x. Say you got two x uh, squared plus one uh, to the power of three, and you want to differentiate that with respect to x. You use the chain rule. Uh, so you have three times. 2x squared plus 1 to the power of 2. So it's like you differentiate the main function. So it's gonna, it's like a bracket to the power of 3. So 3 times all of this bracket to the power of 2. But then you have to multiply by the differential of what's inside the function, which is 4x. So you end up with 12x times 2x squared plus 1 squared. Now that's, of course, nothing to do with this question. It's just to, to make you understand what's going to happen here. That's why this becomes... 3y squared, so you do 3 times y to the power of 2. Then you multiply by the differential of what's inside the function, which is y. And what's the differential of y with respect to x? It's dy dx. So you end up with minus 3y squared dy dx. 
is the differential of minus y cubed. Okay, so what you need to do to, to make yourself uh, remember this, whenever you differentiate something with respect to x and it's not x like it's y, then you differentiate it as you normally would, but then you always write down, uh, multiply it by dy dx, because you're multiplying it by the differential of what's inside the function, which is y. And the differential of y with respect to x is dy dx by definition. And minus 20 when you differentiate becomes 0, and 0 when you differentiate also becomes 0, the constants. Okay, so it says find dy dx in terms of x and y, so we have to now make dy dx the subject of this formula. So you can see that there's two terms on this side which have got dy dx with them. So I'll leave those two terms on this side. So 2xy, so 2x, sorry, dy dx, minus 3y squared dy dx is equal to, and the other two terms, or the other three terms, which are the 1 and the minus 2y and the minus 3x squared, well, I've put them on the other side, so it's going to be 1 minus 2y minus 3x squared. They go onto the other side of the equation. <clears throat> and now we can, uh, oops, we can continue by taking out dy dx as a factor of these two expressions because we want to make it the subject. So you have dy dx, then you have your bracket, 2x minus 3y squared equals 1 minus 2y minus 3x squared. So therefore your dy dx, if you divide both sides by that bracket, you have 1 minus 2y minus 3x squared over 2x minus 3y squared. Let's see how they ask us to express the answer. It's just in terms of x and y, but that's fine. Okay, um, that's part A. And there's our answer here. And as for part B, okay, as for part B, let me just tidy this up a bit. Part B, it tells us to find an equation of the tangent to C at the point 3 minus 2. So part B, you've got to find the equation of the tangent. So you, have, you need the equation of the tangent. At the point, um, at the point three minus two, okay, three minus two, and leave your answer with ax plus by plus c equals zero with them all those integers. So we need to find the gradient of the curve when x equals three and when y equals minus two, okay. And when we differentiate a function, we find its gradient function. So dy dx that we found is actually the what will tell us the gradient and we know the the x and y values that we need to substitute into here which will tell us the gradient at that point okay so when you got what you got to x as 1 and y as minus 2 so you have 1 minus 2 times minus 2 minus 3 times 3 squared over and you have 2 times x which is 2 times 3 minus 3 times minus 2 squared so this will give you 1 plus 4 minus 3 times 9, so minus 27, over, and you're going to have 6, minus, you have 3 times 4, which is 12. Okay, so you're going to have, um, that's going to give you 5 minus 27, which is minus 22, over 6 minus 12, which is minus 6, which is going to be 11 over 3. So we know that the gradient of the, of the tangent is 11 over 3, and we want to find the equation of the tangent, so that's the gradient we need, and that's the point we need, so we can just simply put that into the equation of the straight line formula, y minus y1 equals m, the gradient, times x minus x1. So you have y minus minus 2, which is y plus 2, equals the gradient, which is 11 over 3, times x minus 3, now, as we want to express it in this form where a, b, and c are integers, okay, then you should get rid of the fraction. So I will multiply both sides by 3. So I have 3y plus 6 equals, and I can expand the bracket without the 3 there because I've got rid of it. I've got 11x minus 33. We want x to be on the side which is uh, positive. It's a positive x term normally. So that will be 11x minus 3y minus 39 equals 
0. So there's our answer for part B. 11x minus 3y minus 39 is equal to 0. That's the equation in the form that they asked us to write it in. Okay, so that's a question involving implicit differentiation and equations of tangents to curves. I hope that was clear for you, and I'll be going on to question 3. I'll do that in the next, in the next video.